Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, first of all, yes, I am uh, recording a video of my screen because I, I just don't um, upload anything anywhere but my uh, phone, so I'm recording it uh, directly on my phone just so, to make it easier to upload. But what I'm doing today is uploading a quick video here showing my method for um, forming wind turbine blades in a Fusion 360. Um, this is a free application for private use. So if you guys are looking for any um, 3D modeling software, this is what I've used. And it's so far, it's worked wonderfully for me. So uh, to get started here, I am going to open up a new um, uh, page here. And I'm going to start with the uh, blade base, which is the... Um, circumference or the diameter of the um, blade root where it attaches to the hub. So for this particular example, I'll make it four centimeters. And then from there, I'm going to create an offset plane and uh, decide how long I want my blade to be. So um, for this particular one, I'll make it 90 centimeters because that's how big I made it for my um, V236. So it's 90 centimeters from the root to the um, at, uh, tip of the blade. Now, the way that I do my turbines is the um, blade attaches on the outside of the hub, but if you were gonna do it such that it um, passes through the hub, you'd want to include that in the size of your, um, or the length of the blade. So now that I've done that, I've created my offset plane um, 90 centimeters away from the um, circle here that I wrote. I'm gonna do a sketch here, and now I'm going to um, draw out the dimensions for the blade tip. Now, um, I like to make mine a little bit uh, bigger uh, than what's really realistic because it makes them uh, stronger and easier to print. So I'll just make this one uh, 0.6, so six millimeters, and then I will um, make the edge uh, three millimeters. Um, I always make mine three millimeters at the um, the trailing edge of the blade, but you can of course change that. And then I'm going to uh, connect up the uh, these two circles that I've drawn up here with lines. Um, now, there's probably an easier way to do this, but. I don't know. So now I've drawn this up. Now uh, the blade tip, I tend to make mine a little bit uh, too small. So I'm going to make this one just a tad bit bigger. Well, that kind of messed up my dimensions, but okay. So I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger just because I tend to make them on the small side. So there's the very tip of the blade. Now I'm gonna use my trim tool here and trim off the excess parts. And this will give me um, a single shape here. This is the shape of the blade tip. So now what I have is the blade base where it attaches to the hub and the very tip of the blade, which um, is are separated by the distance of the length of the blade. And now what I'm going to do is construct another offset plane off of the original ba uh, base, and I'm gonna make it however far um, I want my um, widest point of my blade to be. Now where I do it, if you can see, this line right here is where th um, this plane ends up. So. It's not exactly right at the widest part of the blade, but it's really close. So I'm going to make this one uh, 15 centimeters away. And now I'm gonna do another um, sketch here. 
And the way that I do this one is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to use a circle. Instead, I'm going to use an ellipse. And I'm going to angle it a little bit. And the way that I'm going to angle it is like this. For a typical American uh, turbine blade, uh, they turn clockwise if you look at them from the front. Now I'm going to make my ellipse. Uh, it doesn't really matter exactly how wide. I think that looks good. And I'm going to make it. A little bit taller here so you'll notice the way it's angled now what I'm going to do is um, and uh, I will mention that this side here is the front of the turbine and then on this side is where the nacelle would be to give you some orientation now from this um, ellipse here I'm going to add another circle which is going to be uh, three millimeters. And then I'm going to add two sp um, splines from here to the ellipse. Uh, doesn't really matter where. I'm just going to kind of uh, get a rough estimate because you can move them around. And now I want to figure out how wide I want my blade to be. So the further I make this out, the wider the blade is. And if I look at it from the side, that looks a little bit too narrow, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. That looks a little bit too big. I'm going to make it right there. I think that's, that's going to be a good enough uh, size. Now I'm going to move these points around until I get more of a continuous smooth surface. So now for this back one, this is on the back of the blade. This is just a straight line pretty much. Now you could curve it a little bit if you wanted to, but I'm just going to make it a straight line. And then this side, which is going to be the front portion of the blade, is going to be curved a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that this is um, tangent to this ellipse here. And I'm just going to bring this around. Oh, I don't want to move that whole, oh, don't want to move that around. Say right there and see the shape of my airfoil here I think that looks all right now really when you're trying to model a particular turbine you just kind of have to um, go by trial and error at least that's what I do if you can't find uh, exact measurements so just kind of um, adjust it until you think it looks good so now I have three separate shapes here I've got the base of the blade this part here right at the widest part of the blade and then the blade tip. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an offset plane just to kind of get this out of here because um, I, I need to do uh, some more free-formed uh, lines. All right so now we're looking at it over the side here's the hub we're looking straight at the turbine and here's the um, blade section you can see how it's laid out. So I'm going to now work on this first half, the longer section, because I find that easier to do. So I'm going to start by selecting my spline tool, and I'm going to collect it right to the very uh, tip of this middle section, and then I'm going to bring that all the way out and connect it to the um, tip of the end of the blade tip there. And see what I've got there? So this line goes from here. Uh, there. And then I'm also going to connect some straight lines. These are just regular old lines. One there. And one there. Now when it comes to these straight lines, it doesn't really matter where you put them for the most part. I tend to avoid this area right here, this concave section of the blade, but um, I suppose you could put them there. So now I've got something here that looks Pretty good. Now, if you want to, you can kind of mess with this angle to get your uh, blade in really whatever shape you want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it a straight line. However, what I am going to do is I'm going to look at it from the bottom, and I'm just going to move this over just uh, 
one tick forward, just a little bit forward. I don't know if you can see, but this um, just very slightly bends like that. Let's see if I finish the sketch here, you can kind of see how that this middle line just slightly bends. If I look at it from the front here, you can follow it up here. And that gives you a little bit of curvature to the blade, um, which of course real turbines have. Now I'm going to go to my loft tool, select this portion. Uh, I don't want that first one. Then I'm going to add the blade tip, like so. And now I'm going to go here to rails and add those three lines I uh, made, the two straight lines and the curved line. Okay, and now I have the outer section of the blade. Now just looking at it here, um, this part does look pretty thin, so if I was making a turbine that had a wider uh, blade tip, um, I would change that before I went any further. But Now you can really see what I did with that um, line here. Notice how it doesn't really uh, curve much here, but as you go further and further down the blade, it curves further and further. So that's that section of the blade. Next part is going to be this. So I'm just going to kind of get my plane just out of the way. Okay. So now I'm going to create a line that goes from the very top of this uh, form here to the top of the... Um, circle here. I'm going to create two splines. Here's a, and one's going to go from right here to the side of the circle that corresponds, and I'm going to do that on both sides. Um, maybe. Okay, that one, that, this one did not uh, go on right. If I can get those. Okay, so now those are on correctly, I think. I'm just gonna move these around so that they're at the widest point of the blade. It'll make it a little bit easier. If I can move that one, I don't know. That one's not gonna not going to move. I'll try it one more time. I think because I place it directly on that point, it won't move. I'll just move it to the eyeball it, you know, just get it to the widest point, like so. And I'm gonna, of course, add one more of these that goes right from the very bottom tip to the bottom of the circle. Now I've got these four lines. So I'll start with these ones on the top. Now this is actually something I haven't done with my blades, but it would make them look a little bit uh, better. So since this is a spline, you can see, I can see this line, this green line right here, right where my mouse is pointing. I'm gonna line this up so that this matches the outside of the blade. Just make that little point there. Just make sure it touches right on the very edge of the blade. I'm gonna do that for both sides. Oh, can I get you? Okay, that's... Not sure what's happening there. Okay. Okay, that seems good. So I can kind of see how this tapers. I'm gonna go to the bottom and then just make it a little bit wider. To match it on both sides. Okay, I think that looks pretty good there. Now finally we have to do this bottom one. Oh, can I get my orientation right here? I'm going to go to this and then see this green line here. I'm going to make sure that that lines up with this edge of the blade. Like so, 
and then make sure that this one is also um, parallel to the other lines. Oh. Shape it. Notice how that's changing the shape of the oh, that's changing the shape of the blade. Oh, that's some funky stuff. That's not parallel. Oh, this is a mess. I don't know why it does this, but I do have uh, this issue occasionally. There. There we go. Notice how these are lined up. Finish that. I'm going to create a law. Oh, no, actually, I've got one more thing that I should do, and that is line these up. That actually doesn't look too bad. I will move this slightly over to make it straighter. Why is this all messed up? I think that looks all right. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to now do my loft from this point to here, and then add my lines. Okay, now I have my completed blade. So now you can of course uh, split this up so that it um, fits your turbine. Um, there's really uh, not, not too difficult once you get used to it. So there's my uh, rotor completed. So of course now you would have to split these up into sections so that you could um, print them. But there we go. That's the um, how I make my uh, blades for my wind turbines. And then just kind of goes from there. Now the Enercon turbine blades, um, those are definitely a little bit different. And I, I actually find them to be a little bit easier. You just um, do them from uh, you omit the bottom circle piece and just immediately make that um, little uh, airfoil shape. So that's the um, little tutorial here on making wind turbine blades on Fusion 360. Hopefully this was helpful for someone out there. Um, so I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, thanks for watching and bye for now.